Hi and welcome to this video on further uses for line item subsets in Anaplan. Now if you've seen uh, our other video on line item subsets and introduction to, uh, you'll see that that basically showed you how to create a line item subset and its primary use um, when used with a collect function. Uh, what this video is uh, hopefully going to show you is how you can take the use of line item subsets a little bit further and um, it's what I'm going to show you is actually used an awful lot in uh, mappings and mapping scenarios so for things like integrated PL balance sheet cash flow um, I find them really really uh, versatile and I do use this particular uh, method that I'm going to show you an awful lot now obviously I'm not going to take you down the route of showing you mappings as per what you might do as I said in sort of balance sheet and, and cash flow uh, it's a bit too much just for dip your toe in the water demo but the um, the idea of it and the theory is exactly what I'm going to show you here it's just a bit of a simplified scenario so what I wanted to do to introduce this uh, idea of further uses for line item subsets is to imagine a scenario where you want to set up profiles and in this instance it's how we're going to profile um, salaries and basically bonus and commission payments. So here's one I made earlier, it's my profiles module and what you can see is I've set up uh, three profiles. So let's go with the easy ones first of all, quarterly, it's simply line items uh, by time and I've got a one mark at the end of each quarter to show that's when I would want to make a payment on a quarterly profile. So one, one, one and one. Uh, monthly, fairly straightforward, it's a one in every month. So obviously that doesn't change, doesn't matter what department I'm looking at, what region, what um, cost centre, expense line, quarterly is quarterly and monthly is monthly. Hence I've now got this uh, view here and this is something called subsidiary views. You can see that because I've got this little grid icon here. We do have a video on subsidiary views, so if you're not sure on those, then please uh, visit our website or YouTube channel and you can check that out. But what the subsidiary view is basically doing, a view within a view, and rather now than just being line items by time, it introduces uh, departments. So in other words, I might have a bespoke uh, profile based on the department so completely made up for sales I've said yeah that would be a one-off payment at the end of the uh, year marketing uh, I have two uh, basically the half year and the full year so June and December and then uh, potentially a bespoke view for support and finance is a one-off payment in April so that bespoke element comes because I'm now introducing different profiles based on uh, the cost center department that it applies to so there you go, that's my module with my profiles and how they, should, uh, how they should act, basically. So now what I would really like to do is here are my department assumptions, so departments by my line items, and I want to be able to, as you can see here, have a drop down where I can say, well, normally salaries are always done on a monthly profile, but then on a bonus, I I might want it to perform in a different way. So by um, department allowing me to choose a profile uh, to dictate how I will pay these particular expense items. The thing is though, how do I go about doing that? Because back here, that's not a list. They are my line items. So how do I get to the situation where I can choose it as a drop down? Simple, turn it into a line item subset. Um, if you have watched the previous video, you said um, you might remember that I said the simplest way to think of what is a line item subset is it's just line items turned into a list. And I think this uh, shows that better than anything else. So there it is, employee payment profiles set up against the profiles module that I've just shown you. And I've ticked quarterly, monthly, Spoke. So that now acts as a list. I can show you that in the blueprint, the format, list formatted. So I choose it as a list like I would do any 
anything else that was a list of items that I wanted in a drop down. And there you go, it's in my options of lists. So effectively, I've taken those line items, turned them into a list, and now I can choose any of those from that drop down. So now let's take that a step further. Great, I can choose that. What does it then do? Well, let's now go to my simplified PL that I have here to demo for you, and you'll see I have a salaries line. So, view, just want to show you the uh, formula. So, there's quite a lot going on there, but I've got a demo workings line here, so I'm just going to sort of take it out bit by bit, and you can see it's it's really not um, complicated, it's just we've got it doing a number of things. So first of all, let's be really simplistic, let's forget about commission, let's forget about bonus and say, let's just focus on salaries. Now we did say that all salaries were on a um, monthly basis. Now for the purposes of this demo, I've cheated and done something really, really simple. I've stuck annual salary in as a property on the list. Obviously in real world, it would be um, employee related or employee specific, but here it's just to give you the, the idea of what we're doing. So here we are. I'm saying, let's take this first bit. And all I'm gonna do is use this demo workings line so I can show you what's going on. So it says, go to that property, department's annual salary, and then multiply it by the profile looking up the profile that was chosen in my department assumptions. So in other words, it knows how to behave. So those ones, it will know that must be the months that I need to put a payment in. Now, you'll also notice it's using something called result. So profiles.result, and that's the line item I didn't show you. So all I'm gonna do for now is tick that. And there you go. You can see that we have um, 2,000 there in each month. Let me pop that up there so we can see 24,000 in the year. And if I bring you back, we're looking at sales, annual salary. 24,000 no so how is that working what is this result line if I take you back here you can see that line item you didn't see called result is another subsidiary view and it's using a collect it's by department but it also introduces that line item subset employee payment profiles so if I show you there you have quarterly monthly bespoke. So it's now giving a, um, a profile definition for each profile for each department. So it's really just uh, making it very crystal clear how it should behave. Now for quarterly and monthly they're going to be the same but then bespoke, there you go, you can see there's a one there just for sales and for marketing you've got one and one and then here, so just like I showed you before. So all the result line does is draw everything together in the one place. So that now in my PL, let's break it down, let's do a drill down. It goes to my profile, so there's my result line for monthly, Jan 17, there is my one. So it's taking that 24,000, multiplying it by the one in um, January, because monthly we pay every month. And the reason we now don't get the 24,000 in every month is I've just made it a bit smarter. It'd be great, obviously, if you did get 24,000 every month, if you got your annual salary every month, that'd be fantastic. However, not realistic. So we're just dividing it by uh, the full year total. So in other words, it's taking the 24 and dividing by 12. Let's test it. So if I now go back here, if I change that to quarterly, I've now got six, 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 because it's now taking the 24,000 
and you have a one in March and it divides it by the full year, which is four. And really that's all it's doing. But how smart is that? You've taken line items here where you define exactly how you want these profiles to act. You've turned that into a list by using a line item subset. It allows you then, you saw how quick that was. I can do that instantly. And there you go now on here as well. Fantastic. It happens just like that by controlling it via assumptions and a drop down. And then going into the right months. And then the only reason this is more complicated is we're just introducing more elements into it. So what it says in that completed salaries line is it also says that uh, basically if they've reached target, so if the revenue is greater than the 2017 target, then they can also make use of these percentages to say in the months according to the profile, give 10% if you're in sales of um, the salary. So hence here, you're seeing that added on in those months as well. That's all, I know it's very brief, just trying to capture that in a small video, but that is the next further use of line item subsets. And I hope that gives you an idea of just how powerful they can be when you want to do various mappings. Line items are the powerhouse of your module, they're what you need in order to really calculate data um, in this instance to, to really define how you want them to act but sometimes you want to take that knowledge and twist it round into a list and that's what we've done here and that's what you can do via um, line item subsets and that accompanying function called collect as always I hope you found that useful and if you did you can find a whole host of other videos demoing uh, features on Anaplan and the other products uh, that we have available on our website that's innovar.co.uk and also on the Innovar Limited YouTube channel.